Hi YouTube, it's Diane again. I thought when I had a few moments I would do a January whips update video and um, show you some needle minders that I made. I used Stitching Maze technique with the E6000 glue and I made these needle minders. I made this one here is a daisy. Found these buttons at Joann's. And these magnets are pretty strong, so they're hard to pull apart, which is a good thing. And then this one is a blue kind of mother of pearl finish. And I think there's a little bird up there on top of a flower is what I see in the button. So I did that one. Oops. Now, my, now they're chasing each other around the room. Um, this one is a white mother of pearl finish. I love the cutouts on these buttons. And I just did these on wax paper, so with the cutouts, any glue that went through to the surface, I just, when it was a little bit dry, not completely set, I just rubbed it off with my finger. And here's a pink one, the mother of pearl kind of look. And again, cutouts. Joanne's was having a button sale, which is when I purchased these. This one is a gray with the cutouts. And I have actually two on this project here that I made. Let me grab it real quick. Um, another cutout. This one is black in that early finish button. And of course, you cannot cross stitch without a little chocolate. This is 100% sugar free, calorie free, gluten free, dairy free. Your hands won't get messy, so you won't damage your project. You gotta have chocolate. And this one is probably the favorite of this batch. I'll be honest, I found some other things to make more out of. Just haven't gotten around to making them. It's this butterfly. I will say, if you have any kind of sensitivity to glues, adhesives, paint smells, don't use the E6000, it stinks. Um, I had a little fan going while I was doing it. It still ugh, gave me a little bit of a headache. And I'm not super sensitive to smells, but uh, my mom, a few years ago, she was having some chest pains and they couldn't figure out why. Eventually they figured out, my dad was a carpenter, he's now retired, there was a certain finish or glue, I can't remember, what product it was that he used in his shop and the odors, the, the vapors from the, that particular product um, made my mom have an allergic reaction and the only way she knew she was having an allergic reaction was the valve in her heart was a little inflamed. No rash, no headache, nothing else. So whenever my dad would use that particular product he would say you can't come to the shop you know, and he would not let her go to the shop for a few days because he didn't want her um, to have a reaction. So I know that people can be sensitive to the smells. If you are, don't use this product. Um, use maybe uh, like an Aline's craft glue and then put hot glue around it so you get the instant contact, but then you get the staying power of the craft glue. Try some different options. I'm not sure. I do have another batch of things to make some needle minders out of. I don't know if I'm going to use the E6000. I'm still going back and forth. If I do use the E6000, it's going to be when it's warm in Minnesota, so it's not warm right now. On the deck, in the fresh air, where I don't have to smell the vapors forever. Just a, a little thing. If you want to make your own needle minders and you have any kind of sensitivity, watch the E6000. I know that uh, I bought mine at Joann's and there were a whole variety of adhesives, so you might want to look at one of those. But my whips. The first whip I did here in January was the Mirabilia Stitch Along, and I'm doing Venetian Opulence. There. She isn't um, very wide, but she's a tall design. And I love the detail in her and the, these colors. 
um, it's kind of funny because I mentioned a video or two ago that my least favorite DMC color is 3371. Of course, I bought a Heaven and Earth design that has 11 skeins of 3371. This design has two skeins of 3371, and it's the only duplicate. And I started in the center, and where I started in the design, there's a lot of 3371, so that's what you're going to see on here. It's a, a brown black is the color. And here is where I'm at. I've worked enough projects to know that if I can get a big section like this one here, and I take my time stitching it, then when I have other colors around it, I can use that as an anchor to double check my counting. That way, if I have to unstitch, it's you know, two or three stitches rather than a hundred. I suppose we should determine, we should define what frogging, how many stitches does it take to actually be frogging and work. Um, on this one, I've done reds and some purples. Oh, you can see the purple over here. I wasn't sure if it would show up against the 3371. I look forward to the using the blues and the greens in this project and definitely the golds. But there's a lot of 3371, so apparently I'm supposed to get to like that color. We'll see. So that's my whip number one. My whip number two is the birth sampler for my son. Heirloom birth sampler by the Victoria Sampler. And I did not take a picture of my starting point on this one. Um, but here is where I'm at now. And this is done at Cruz. And uh, this one, okay, I was on these, this row here, I was about halfway through the last time I showed this project. Since that time, I've added the Krennic. This row, which is not complete, um, this row I have to take some silk ribbon and weave it through the bars. I'm waiting on that because there's another row of this up above, and then I could do you know, the same thing at the same time. And then there's this one here, and this. This is my favorite stitch in this project. Get nice and close. It is called Rhodes, R-H-O-D-E-S, Butterfly. The first couple, I actually missed part of the stitch. And I went back and I was able to quickly fix it. But after, when I got to the end over, let's see, no, let's see, I started over here. And here's the end over here. And there are two, four, six, eight of them. I was really disappointed because I wanted to do more. And there's only one row of that in this design. I suppose I could tinker and add another row, but that's okay. And that's as far as I am with that. And um, I, I have stitched in the hand for 20 plus years. So stitching on the scroll frame is definitely a new thing for me. But with that one, with all the specialty stitches that are in it, plus there's hard anger on the bottom and silk ribbon at the top, I really need the attention of the uh, scroll frame. Then my other whip is a former UFO filled into my whips, and it's this one. The uh, what's it called? Graduate graduation goals is the name. This is from Stony Creek Magazine, Spring 2011. I started this design in 2011 uh, before our daughter graduated our homeschool. Uh, to be honest, 2011 was a hard year for our family. We just had one thing after another. So her graduation was definitely a bright high point in our year. To give you an example, the week before she graduated, she graduated on a Saturday. My husband ended up in the hospital uh, with an extreme pain in his back. And it looked as though he would have to have surgery. And trust me, to see your husband wheeled into the back of an ambulance... 
it just rips your heart out. You cannot breathe. You can't think. And I remember being at the hospital floor in the morning, you know, just not knowing what in the world I was supposed to do. So it, it looks like you'd have to have surgery. Our homeschool organization does a really, really nice graduation. And part of the graduation, you don't have to have a state certified diploma. That's not necessary in the United States. Um, colleges accept public school, private school, and homeschool diplomas out of courtesy. But there's no law that says they have to. So part of the ceremony, because as parents, the administrators of the school, we are giving the diploma, is the parents go up on the stage and the graduate, they're, they're sitting on stage, so they come down, and the parents hand over a symbolic diploma. And I didn't really know if I would be pushing him in a wheelchair or helping him with a walker, a cane, or if he could even attend. Um, but he walked across the stage on his own power. Um, a lot of people in the auditorium knew what was going on, that he had, he had this going on. So there were, it, it just erupted in applause. And it's a very emotional day to see your child graduate, but that added to it in a good way. So 2011, I, I put this aside. I just, I couldn't deal with another thing. I had to really pull back everything. Um, I didn't do a lot of sewing or, or just, it was basics. We have to get this taken care of. So um, I did take a picture of this one before I started. And here is what it looked like when I pulled it out of my UFO. So that's what it looked like. And this is what it looks like now. I love how the lime green and the teal and the brown are just they're playing off this purple. The fabric is 30 count, it's a week's dye work, dye works, excuse me, uh, pan dyed linen. Peoria purple is 30 count. So I did all the, finished all the letters and I really like the uh, fiber in the middle. It's called Coffee and Cream by Threadworks, and it really adds a lot. And then you have the teal and the uh, lime green. They just play off of each other. And I, and the needle minder that I chose to use for this project, I didn't even realize it. But it matches the colors in the project. That was kind of interesting. And I have half the tree done. It says Believe. The lower part of the tree says Dream. So I'm going to get that done this next cycle. Um, the deadline for this is June because she's graduating college. So that's why I thought it'd be great to get it done this year. Um, I was going to have this one in my rotation. Teresa Wensler, Carousel Horse, Winter. But I was looking at the pattern the other day to start it. I have everything to do it. I do not know why, but this pattern is intimidating. It's weird. I, I don't know why it's intimidating me, but it is. So I'm going to put it down. I thought, you know what? I have these other things. Um, the graduate I have to get done by June, so deadline. The birth sampler I want to have done this year. He turns one in 12 days, 13 days. And I really want to have that done. So I have two projects that have deadlines. And I thought, well, instead of getting all worked up about this project and stuff, I'll just set it aside for a little bit. I know that Wonderfully Hopeless is looking at a Teresa Wensler stitch along for 2016 time frame. I might have it for then. I don't know. But right before Christmas, I started the White Dragon by Heaven and Earth Design. This is one, before I even really had it out of the package, my eight-year-old son said, Mom, I want I really like that. So I'm stitching this for him. And I realize it's a large project. It is, um, I'm doing an 18 count Ada, full cross, two, two over one, full cross. 
Um, I figured that would be really good for my first Heaven and Earth design. And I read a lot. I watched a lot of your videos. And I thought, this is the way I'm going to do it. And Carolyn from Australia did the Blue Dragon by the same artist. And I did not feel she lost any of the detail by doing it on 18 count. So that's why I chose 18 count. And um, the linen I cut was 31 by 23. So that would be 17. So 25 by 17. So 25 wide, 17 tall. Big project. And if you've not watched the Traveling Stitchers video on how to adapt these scroll frames with longer stretcher, or not stretcher bars, but longer scroll rods, you need to watch them because I use her technique. And this is what I have. I have about half of the first page. Try to hold it so you can see. There it is. About half of the first page done. I am kind of adapting Carolyn's from Australia uh, parking technique, but it it's working for me overall. The thing is with the background, um, the black there's black and there's eight two three, which is really dark blue. That's most of the background. Some of it doesn't stop right at stitch number ten, and somebody brought up on a forum or, or something I read. They were worried about the columns showing. So when I was doing, say I would do 10 stitches of black, if the black went into the next column, I would just finish that row. And that's why it's kind of staggered like this. Um, but the parking technique is it's new for me. I've never done it before. And it's working. I've also never marked my patterns, except for the center or if I adapted something. So if you are seriously going to do a heaven and earth design, whether you do it using a digital pattern or paper pattern, you have to mark your design. And I say this as a person who doesn't mark her designs. You have to. Or you're going to go batty. So um, that's what I've been doing. And that's about half of one page. Um, with my shoulder being the way it is, having the scroll frame is a good thing. I also purchased a floor frame following the Traveling Stitcher's suggestions in one of her videos on adapting it to have the bars that you could just lay the frame on. Did that, one of my sons helped me, and it's working for me. Um, I'm going to do another video, kind of a public service announcement on things to consider when you're stitching. But that's my uh, whips update. I wanted to make sure I had it done before the end of January. One of my sons is turning 18 today. And on two days from now, another son is turning three. So January, we have four birthdays. And then February, I have two birthdays. So it, it, it's going to be busy with cake. I'm sitting in a room right now, and I have cake, and that's all I smell, <laughs> good or bad, um, for a birthday tonight. So I want to make sure to get this done so I had time to post it and all of that. And then I'll do the other videos that I'm planning on doing talking about the hopeless sows, as Miss Mel calls them, that I plan on participating this year, my public service announcement, and there were a couple of tags I was going to answer. So those will be different videos. But as for now, it's my WHIPS project. Um, I'm not sure about the Teresa Wensler. I, I might bump that and have the White Dragon instead. I don't know. It's one thing with stitching. You can adapt it to your needs. So I definitely have the two projects that have the deadline, and the Mirabilia is just by the end of the year is my goal. And I did red um, in a year, and that's taking four, five months off after my little guy was born. Um, and I finished that in December, so it's very feasible to do that one. And that one is coming along quickly. I'm still doing that one in the hand. It's very easy to do in the hand and I'm liking it so I have to start that one again next week but I thank you for watching and I thank you for subscribing I really appreciate it and I appreciate your comments and I'm sorry the lighting is bad today it's Minnesota cloudy it's kind of the pattern we've been in recently you get sun for five minutes here five minutes there so I try and catch the sun because that vitamin D is so good but 
it's just not here today. But I thank you for watching, and I will post those other videos in the next couple weeks. But I am enjoying watching your videos, and I encourage you to, to you know, try this video thing if you've never done it. But I also really appreciate your comments, and I look forward to talking to you soon. So until I see you again, have a good stitching day, and hopefully it'll be soon. <laughs> um, yeah, so have a good January. Oh, if you live in Minnesota, Stitchville is having their Super Bowl sale this Sunday. On Super Bowl Sunday, they have a sale where most of the store is discounted. And the discounts, I think, vary. Um, they do have a punch card. You cannot use your punch card on Super Bowl Sunday. But I'm trying to get there this week. I haven't approached Hubby about it yet, but I was going to ask if I could go. It takes a, it's a little prep for me to go because of the distance, um, which is a bummer. I'd love to go there more often, but it's probably better on my check checkbook that it's not so close. But I just wanted to mention, if you live in Minnesota, near the Twin Cities area, uh, Stitchville is in Minnetonka by Ridgedale Shopping Center. They are having their sale. I do not know if it's online also um, but I did want to mention that so maybe I'll see you there if you go and I go but I hope you have a good stitching week and I will talk to you again in February thanks bye